Pistoned engine fighters ruled the roost for 30 years. A brutal survival of the fittest ensured a rapid evolution of these characterful machines. The final fighters were over six times faster and around ten times heavier than the first generation. Whereas the early fighters had only a single rifle caliber weapon, the Tiger Cat of 1943 had an awe-inspiring arsenal of 450 cals and 420mm cannon. The Tiger Cat also had 40 times more horsepower than a World War I fighter. The era of classic fighter planes ended on a high point with huge, powerful masterpieces. We look at the zenith of prop fighter design and choose the 10 most formidable machines. Number 10, the Fokker Wolf TA-152H. Faster and possessing a greater range than the Spitfire 14, the TA-152H was possibly the finest pistoned engine fighter in the world at high altitude. Had the war lasted and the high-flying B-29 bomber been committed to Europe, then this aircraft would have been its nemesis. Number 9, the Lobochkin LA-11. The ultimate Soviet pistoned engine fighter and the go-to aircraft for low and medium altitude operations, the LA-11 represented the zenith of the superlative Lobochkin series of combat aircraft and is one of the few aircraft on this list to have seen a serious amount of use on operations. Combat aircraft's Thomas Newdick noted that it was last of an illustrious line and scored a hatful of Cold War air-to-air -air kills. Well, a lot more than the Sea Fury anyway. The LA-9 was a better flyer, but the LA-11 marked the apogee of the Soviet piston engine fighter. It also showed you that you could still eke performance out of the rugged basic design, which went back to 1940, while the agile Yak series of fighters came to an end with the wartime Yak-3 after which its wing was put to use for early jet fighters. Number 8. The Dornier DO-335 The DO-335 was unorthodox. It featured two tandem engines in the fuselage and a unique push-me-pull-you propeller arrangement. With the power of a two-engined aircraft and the front cross-section of a single, the result was a remarkable top speed of 474 miles per hour. Pierre Klosterman was one of the first Allied pilots to encounter the aircraft. However, even in the extremely fast Tempest, the flight he was leading was unable to catch the file. Fortunately, we will never know what this amazing machine was truly capable of. The performance of the pre-production machine was spectacular. A handful served on operations, but little is known of what they achieved. Had the jet engine not burst onto the scene, it is likely that a spate of designs would have aped its revolutionary layout. Number 7. The Supermarine Spitfire Mark 24. The last model of Spitfire designed for land operations by the RAF was a potent combat aircraft and easily one of the world's finest at the end of the 1940s. This serves to underline the remarkable unbroken development of the basic design that first flew in 1936. The Mark 24 was twice as heavy, more than twice as powerful, and showed an increase in climb rate of 80% over that of the prototype Spitfire. Number 6, the Grumman F7F Tiger Cat. Over 4,000 horsepower, a great range, a superb climb rate, and a tremendous top speed of 460 miles an hour. For a twin engined aircraft, it was also highly maneuverable. It's therefore surprising to learn that it scored only two kills, and they were slow, vulnerable biplanes. However, it could be argued that it's done more good than any other aircraft on this list, as Tiger Cats operated for many years as firefighting tanker aircraft in California. Interestingly, the F7F was intended to be named Tomcat, but this was deemed to be too sexually suggestive, a serious problem for an aircraft designed to kill people. 
Number five, the Martin Baker MB5. Perhaps the greatest allied might have been of the war was the Martin Baker MB5. The aircraft drew unanimous praise from those who flew it. Its speed, range and climb rate were outstanding and it got more out of a Rolls-Royce Griffin than any other aircraft. Whether it would have lived up to its obvious potential will remain unknown, having the misfortune to emerge into a world teeming with inferior but numerous spitfires and tempests. Number four, the North American P-82 Twin Mustang. A bizarre machine consisting, more or less, of two lengthened P-51H fuselages joined with a new centre section, the P-82B holds the record for the longest unrefueled non-stop flight by a propeller-driven fighter, which was 8,129 kilometres. It was also exceptionally fast. Sadly for the US Air Force, later models of the twin Mustang were powered by Allison engines rather than the superlative Merlin fitted to earlier examples due to increased royalties demanded by Rolls-Royce, and performance was reduced as a result. The single-engined P-51H also deserves a mention as a remarkably potent aircraft. Number three, the de Havilland Hornet. Faster and far longer range than the first generation jets, the Hornet also happens to be achingly beautiful. Eric Winkle Brown, the world's most experienced test pilot, maintained it was his favourite pistoned engine aircraft. As he put it, My favourite pistoned engine aircraft is the de Havilland Hornet, for the simple reason it was overpowered. This is an unusual feature in an aircraft. You could do anything on one engine almost that you could do on two. It was a hot rod mosquito really. I always described it as like a Ferrari in the sky. Equal first place, Hawker Sea Fury and Grumman F8F Bearcat. One holds the absolute climb rate record for pistoned engine aircraft, the other the maximum speed record. Both appeared as a result of the same problem. It was difficult to operate a jet fighter from a carrier and thus piston engine fighter development was allowed to develop to its apogee. They are so closely matched that it's impossible to choose between them. Over to Captain Eric Winkle Brown again, who sums it up rather neatly. In the case of the Bearcat, I find myself inevitably comparing it with the Hawker Sea Fury, and there was really very little to choose between the two. The Bearcat probably had the edge on climb and manoeuvrability, but was not such a good weapons platform, nor as good in instrument flight conditions as the Sea Fury. It was rather like the FW-190 versus the Spitfire nine situation. They were so evenly matched that if they met in combat, the skill of the pilot alone would have been the deciding factor. Both were certainly great aircraft. The Sea Fury was the pinnacle of Hawker's illustrious prop fighter line. The Sea Fury had everything a great fighter needs. It was tough, well-armed, fast and agile. Despite its enormous size and power, it had a 2,000 480 horsepower engine. It had delightful handling qualities. Pilots were impressed with how spin resistant it was. And Sea Fury pilot Dave Eagles gave it top marks for agility. The Sea Fury was sent to war in Korea, where it proved itself an excellent warplane, notably downing a MiG-15 jet fighter in 1952. Hushkit.net only exists thanks to people like you digging in your pockets and helping. If you enjoyed this, go to hushkit.net and donate. Follow us on Twitter and tell all of your lovers. <laughs>